Welcome to the world of regular expressions, where text is your playground and patterns are your tools. In this video, I will take you on a journey through the power of regex, and show you how it can make your life easier in ways you never thought possible. Imagine being able to search for a specific link inside an email body, validate a password, or even search for a certain text inside a large file in just seconds. These are just a few examples of the countless possibilities that regex can offer. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced programmer, this video will provide you with the knowledge and skills to master the art of regex. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to unlock the true potential of text manipulation. First let's understand what is regex and why is it useful. Regular expressions, or regex for short, are a powerful tool used to match and manipulate text. They are used in a wide variety of contexts, such as text editing, data analysis, and programming. With regex, you can search for specific patterns in a text, replace certain characters or words, and validate data. Whether you're a developer, data analyst, or just someone who works with a lot of text, learning regex will save you a lot of time and effort. Before we dive deep into the world of regular expressions, let's first clarify what the word pattern means. In general, a pattern refers to a regular or repeated arrangement of elements, shapes, or colors. It is a design or layout that is repeated or follows a certain structure. In the context of regular expressions, a pattern is a sequence of characters that defines a search or match criteria. It is a string of characters that can be used to find or replace specific text or groups of characters in a larger body of text. The pattern can be a simple string of characters, such as a word or number, or it can be more complex, using special characters and meta characters to specify more precise search criteria. The pattern is used as an input for regex functions or methods, which then search through the target text for matches based on the pattern. Let's now start learning the different patterns we can use to find a specific text. The first one is the following. This means, that I am searching for only these three characters, A, B, or C. For example the following text, where I want to search for the characters. If I am using this pattern, I will get only the following characters as output. So, this pattern is to get exact the same character, and it's also case sensitive. For example the text contains the character A, but it's in uppercase, therefore I will not get it as result. To get it also, I have to change the pattern to this one. In this way I will get all matches for these letters, A in lower or uppercase, B, and C. To find only the letter G in the text, I can use the following pattern. To find the character, at, inside the text, we can use the following pattern for example and so on I can write the different characters I am searching for in this way. This is how to find a specific character or characters inside a text. Assume I want to get all characters from the text, except a specific character. For that I can use the following pattern. This means, that I want to get each character as output, except the characters I defined in this set. For example the following text, and the following pattern. This means, I want to get all characters from the text, except letters A, B, and C. The result will be as following. As you see, I will get each character, except A, B, and C. In summary, if you want to get a specific text from a large text, except specific characters, you can use this pattern. You only have to set this character, then the character you don't want to get as result. That's all about the first two patterns. In summary, the first pattern matches any single character that is either A, B, or C, while the second pattern matches any single character that is not A, B, or C. Let's now check the next pattern. This pattern is to find a specific text, what I defined inside the brackets. For example the following text. The result will be here only the word apple, what I have in the pattern. If the word apple is written in uppercase, I will not get it as result. To find the word apple in uppercase, I have to change the pattern to this one. In this case I will find the word apple. I can also write a complete sentence, what I want to search for, like this pattern here. This means, that I want to search for exact the same sentence. As result I will get this text here. And so on I can search for a specific word or sentence inside a large text. Assume I have the following text, where I have the word apple with other letters, for example here as plural. And I am using the following patterns. In this case, I will also find only the word apple, without s. This means, 
The text I am searching for could be also a substring, and must not be always as whole word. In summary, these brackets group multiple characters together, and create a capture group for extracting a substring. I can also do exact the same, without using the brackets. For example the following pattern returns also the same result. So, to search for a specific text or sentence, you can use the text you want to search for directly as pattern. If the text you are searching for exists in the same case, you will get it as result, else you will not get anything as result. If there is more than one match, you will get all found matches. That's all about searching for a specific text. The next pattern is the following, that can be used to search for only the letters, which are from A to Z in lower case. For example the following text, which contains letters, numbers, and other characters like points and commas. Using this pattern I will get only the letters in lower case. All other letters in upper case, or the numbers or anything else will not be in the result. The following pattern is also to search for letters only, but in upper case. For example the same text with this pattern will return the following result. So, I will get only the letters in upper case as result. In summary, the first pattern will match any lowercase letter from A to Z. And the second pattern will match any uppercase letter from A to Z. We can also use the same pattern in another way, for example this one. This pattern is to get only the lowercase letters, which are between A and G. The same also to get only the uppercase letters, for example between D and X. And so on we can define a range of letters, what we want to search for. We can also search for both, lower case and upper case, using one pattern. For that we have these two patterns, which are exact the same. So, using one of these two patterns, we will get each letter from the text, in both lower and upper case. The next pattern is the following, that can be used to search for only numbers. For example the following text contains numbers and other characters. Using this pattern I will get only the numbers from this text. In this way I can search for any number inside a text. If I want to search for only specific numbers, I can also use for example the following pattern. This means, that I want to search for only the numbers, which are 0, 1, or 2. Or this one to get only the numbers, which are between 5 and 9. Or this one, to get only the number 7. And so on I can search for numbers inside a text. We can also use the following pattern to get any number from 0 to 9. It's exact the same like this one. So, we can use any pattern we want. The result will be the same. We also have this pattern, which matches any character except the numbers. Here we have the letter D in uppercase after backslash. This means, we can use it to get anything from the text, except the digit numbers. I can also use one of the following patterns, to get all letters in lower and upper case, and also the numbers. All these patterns are the same. There is no difference between the different patterns. So, the order of the patterns is not important in this case. You can also use other ranges for the letters and the numbers. I mean, you can use for example the following pattern, to get the letters from C to G in both lower and upper case, and also the numbers between 3 and 7. Or the following pattern, to get only the letters between A and D in lower case, and the letters between L and X in upper case, and the numbers between 5 and 8. And so on you can change the pattern, depending on your business requirements. We can also use more simple pattern to get the same result. It's backslash W. So, we have backslash and W in lower case. This pattern matches any character or number. It means, it covers the letters from A to Z in both lower and upper case, and also the numbers from 0 to 9. This pattern covers also underscore. So, to find any letter from A to Z or any number, or any underscore inside a text, I can use this pattern. We also have another pattern to find anything except the letters or numbers or underscore. It's the following, where the W is written in upper case. This pattern is to find any character, except the letters from A to Z, in both lower and upper case, and except the numbers or underscore. It's to find the points, the commas, question marks, empty spaces, etc. Let's now check how to use the following two patterns with other patterns. For example the following three texts. I want to get the following string from the texts. This string has the following structure. It starts always with letter G in upper case, then we have a number or letter. After that we have the letter G in upper case, then we have another number or letter. To get the type we can do that as following. In this example we are searching for a specific word. 
This means, we can write the word either inside brackets or without brackets. The type starts with G, therefore we set G at the beginning. After that we could have a number or a letter. For that we can use this pattern. After that we have the letter G again, then a number or letter. As mentioned, this pattern is to get any number or letter, therefore I used it instead of the unknown character, which could be letter or number. In this case, the pattern backslash W is to find only one character, which appears after the letter G. Using this pattern we will get the following result. So, the pattern backslash W is in this case to search for only one character, not for each character in the whole text, because I used it in this way. The same is using the pattern backslash D. This is how to use this pattern with other patterns. I will talk more about these patterns later. The next pattern is dot. Dot matches any character except line breaks. For example the following text. If I am using only dot as pattern, I will get all characters as result. We can use it also in another way. I mentioned before, if we want to search for a specific word, we can either write it inside brackets or without brackets. For example the following text and pattern. From this text I will get the following result. Assume I don't know, what is the second character? It could be G, H, X, a number, or any other character. I can use dot instead of the character in this way. Using this pattern I will get the following word as output, because dot means that I want to get any word, which starts with A and ends with C, no matter what the second character is. Assume I have the following text and I am using the same pattern here. I will not get any matches, because the word has two characters between A and C. If I want to get this word as result, I have to change the pattern to this one. Here I have two dots, which means that I could have two characters here. In this case I will get this word as result. In summary, we can use dot without anything, to get all characters from the text. Or I can use it with other patterns instead of one character, as I did with this pattern here. Before moving to the next pattern, let's summarize the patterns we learnt until this point. The first one is to match any character inside this set. This means, this set contains for example the letters A, B, and C. To search for only these characters inside the text, we can use this pattern. The next one matches any character except the characters inside this set. For example here we have the letters A, B, and C. To search for all characters except these three characters, we can use this pattern. The next one is a group for characters. It's to search exact the same group, what we have inside the brackets. For example here we have the group ABC, which means that I want to search for exact the same string. The next one is a range for characters, to match any character inside this group. The characters that we also have in the range are inclusive. For example here the range is between A and Z, and it's in lower case, which means that all letters, also A and Z, are in the range, what we want to search for. The next one is exact the same, but to search for letters in upper case. The next one is also a range, but for digit numbers, to get each number between 0 and 9. The next one matches any word character, alphanumeric and underscore. It's equivalent to this pattern. The next one matches any character that is not a word character. It means, not alphanumeric or underscore. It's equivalent to this pattern. The next one matches any digit character between 0 and 9. It's equivalent to this pattern. The next one matches any character that is not a digit character. It's equivalent to this pattern. And the last one matches any character except line breaks. These are the patterns, what we learnt until this point. Let's now check the next patterns, which are called as quantifier. Quantifiers are used to specify how many times a pattern should be matched. In other words, they are used to specify how many times a pattern should match in the input string. We have the following four quantifier patterns. Let's start with the first one, question mark. Question mark means, that a character or a class or a group exists zero or one time. For example the following pattern. Both are the same, where I use this brackets to search for a group of characters. Without brackets is also the same, as already mentioned before. I have the letter G and question mark after it. This means, that I want to search for the word together, but the letter G is optional. So, it could exist only once or it doesn't exist. I have for example the following three texts. 
using this pattern I will find the word in the first text, because the word is exact the same, but without the letter G. I will also find this word in the second text, because the word is exact the same, and it contains also the letter G. But I will not find this word in the third text, because the letter G exists twice. This is a way of using question mark, to define a specific character as optional. Let's now check another way of using question mark. I have the following text, which contains the word apple twice. The first one has a comma after it, but the second one is in the middle. Assume I want to get the first apple word. To do that I can use the following pattern. This pattern is also the same, because as mentioned, we can search for a group using brackets or also without these brackets. Here I have the word apple, what I am searching for. After that I used question mark with backslash and comma. This means here, that I am searching for the word apple, which has comma after it. In this case I will get only this word as result. Later in this video I will show you, how to get the second apple word from this text. This was the second way of using question mark. I will also talk more about this pattern later, once we learn more patterns. Let's move on to the next quantifier pattern, asterisk. The asterisk quantifier specifies, that the preceding character or group should occur zero or more times. We can use it exact in the same way, as we did using the question mark. Let's see the same example. I have this pattern for example, to search for the word together. I have asterisk after the letter G, which means, that letter G occurs many times or it doesn't exist. Using this pattern, I will find the word together in all texts, because the letter G doesn't exist in the first text, but the word is the same. The second text contains exact the same word. And the third one contains the same word, and the letter G exists twice. If we have this text also, we will find the word together again. So, the asterisk means that the letter G could occur many times, or it doesn't exist. We can also use asterisk to find a word, which has a specific character after it. For example the following text. To get the word apple, which has comma after it, we can use this pattern. In this way I will get only the word apple here, because there is a comma after it. Assume I have the following text, where the word apple is written twice. In this case I will also get this word, because asterisk means, that a character or word could appear more than once. And I will get this one, because it has a comma after it. The same also for this text. I will get this word, because I have the word apple three times. And so on we can search for a specific string using this pattern. Let's now check the next quantifier pattern, plus. The plus quantifier specifies, that the preceding character or group should occur one or more times. We can use it also in the same way, as we did using question mark and asterisk. For example the following pattern, and the following three texts. Using this pattern I will get the word together from the second and third texts, because the letter G exists at least once. But in the first one there is no letter G, therefore I will not get this word as result. So, plus is to define, that a string exists at least once. We can use this pattern also to find a text, which is also a specific character after it. For example the following pattern and the following text. In this case I will get the first apple word, because it is comma after it. The same also if I have the word apple twice, or three times. In all cases I will get the word. This is how to use plus pattern. Let's move on to the last quantifier pattern, curly brackets. This pattern has three different structures, which are the following. And an M stand for numbers. For example the following three patterns with numbers. The first one contains only the number one, which means that a character or a group must occur only one time. The second one contains the number three followed by a comma, which means that a character or a group must occur at least three times. The last one contains two numbers, zero and three, which means that a character or a group must occur between zero and three times. Let's check the following examples to understand what does each one mean. I have the same text five times. Assume I have the following patterns to find the word together, which is written in another way in each line. Either the letter G doesn't exist, or it exists once, or many times. Let's start with the first pattern. I have the pattern after letter G, which means that letter G must occur only once. In this case we will get only this word as result, because this word is exact the same and it contains the letter G only once. Let's check the second one. Here I have the number 3 followed by a comma, which means that letter G must occur 3 or more times. 
In this case we will get the following words as result, where the letter G occurs three or more times. Let's check the last pattern. Here I have the range 0 to 3, which means that letter G must not occur, or it occurs up to three times. In this case we will get the following words, where the letter G doesn't occur, or it occurs 1, 2, and 3 times. This is how to use curly brackets, to get the number of repetitions of a character or group of characters. Let's now check another pattern, what we can also use as a quantifier pattern. It's vertical bar, which acts like a boolean or. We can use it between different values, for example this one. Here I want to search for a word, which starts with B and ends with D. But the letter in the middle could be A or E. Using this pattern I will find the following two words, bed and bad. Let's check another example. This text contains the words, possible and impossible. Assume I want to get both words from the text. I can do that using the following pattern. This pattern means, that I want to get the word possible, which contains one of these two options. Either it has M at the beginning, or it has nothing. In this case I will get both words as result. In these examples I used vertical bar for only two options, but we can have also more options. So, it must not be used for only two values. We can also use it between two expressions. That's all about quantifier patterns. Let's summarize the quantifier patterns, before moving to the next part. We have the following five quantifier patterns. The question mark quantifier specifies, that the preceding character or group should occur zero or one time. The asterisk quantifier specifies, that the preceding character or group should occur zero or more times. The plus quantifier specifies, that the preceding character or group should occur one or more times. The curly brackets are to define, how many times a character or a group of characters should occur. It can be used in three different ways. Either with only one number, for example 5, which means that the character or the group of characters should occur 5 times. Or with a number followed by a comma, for example 1 comma, which means that the character or the group of characters should occur at least once. Or with two numbers with a comma between them, for example 3 comma 5, which means that the character or the group of characters should occur 3 4 or 5 times. The last quantifier pattern is vertical bar. This acts like or operator. It can be used to find one of different available characters, for example X or W. This pattern will find either X or W. That's all about quantifier patterns. Let's now check the next patterns, which are called as anchors. Anchors are special characters used to assert a position within the text. They don't match any characters themselves, but rather indicate where a pattern should or should not occur relative to certain positions in the input string. There are four anchor patterns, which are the following. Carat symbol, dollar sign, word boundary, non-word boundary. Let's start with the first one, the carat symbol. It's used to denote the beginning of a line. When you place carat symbol before your pattern, it will only match if the pattern is at the very start of the line. Let's check the following example to understand it. I have the following lines. Each line contains the word apple. I have the following pattern. As mentioned, this symbol is to denote the beginning of a line. After carat symbol I use the word apple. This pattern means, that I am searching for the word apple at the beginning of the line. The result here will be the following two words, where the word apple is at the beginning of the line. All other apple words, which are not at the beginning of the line, or which are not written the same, will not be in the result. This is how to use caret symbol to find a text at the beginning of a line. But wait, there's a twist in the tail. The caret symbol has a doppelganger role when placed inside square brackets. This is a crucial point you should be aware of. In this context, right at the start of a character class, the caret is all about negation. It essentially tells the regex engine, I want any character but these. For instance, the pattern, caret apple, will hunt for any single character that isn't an A, P, L, or E. Why does this matter? Well, in regex as in coding, context is everything. Placing the caret outside brackets sets its role as a start of line sentinel. But inside brackets, it transforms into a gatekeeper, excluding specific characters. So, when crafting or reading regular expressions, always pay close attention to where and how the caret is being used. It's a small symbol with big implications. In summary, 
If you want to get the first word of a line, you can use caret symbol with the word you are searching for. This can be one of both patterns. Either with brackets or without brackets. It will be the same, because here we are searching for a word. But if you want to negate a specific character or group of characters, you have to use caret symbol inside square brackets. Like this one here to match any character except the X letter. Here are some common pattern examples of using caret symbol to match the beginning of the line. The first one is to match the first word in the line, no matter what the word is. The second one is to match the first character in the line, no matter what the character is. So, you can use caret symbol not only with words or characters, but also with other patterns, what we already discussed in the video. That's all about caret symbol. Let's now check the second one, dollar sign. The dollar sign is used to denote the end of a line. When you place dollar sign after your pattern, it will only match if the pattern is at the very end of the line. Let's check the following example to understand it better. I have the following five lines. Each line contains the word apple. I have the following pattern, where I use the word apple with a dollar sign after it. It means, I am searching for the word apple, which is at the end of the line. The result of this pattern will be the following two words, because both are at the end of the line, while the other are not at the end of the line. So, dollar sign is to donate the end of the line. I used a word here, but we can use anything else we need, like a sentence, one character, number, other patterns, etc. Let's check the following pattern examples using dollar sign. The first one is to get the last digit numbers of a line. The second one is to check if a line ends with a certain file extension, such as JPG. The third one is to check if a line ends with any words of the following three words. And so on we can use dollar sign to denote the end of a line. That's all about the dollar sign. Let's now check the next pattern, word boundary. It matches the position where a word character is not followed or preceded by another word character, such as between a letter and a space. In other words, it can be used to find the start of a word, the end of a word or a whole word. This means, it can be used in three different ways. The first one is before the pattern we want to search for, for example this one. It's to find any word in the text, which starts with the word cat. For example the word catch starts with cat. Using this pattern I will get cat as result. The second one is after the pattern we are searching for, for example this one. It's to find any word in the text, which ends with the word cat. For example the word wildcat ends with cat. Using this pattern I will get cat as result. The third one is before and after the pattern we are searching for, for example this one. It's to find exact the word cat in text, without any other letters or characters. In this case, the word cat must be as whole word, without any other letters before or after it. In general, word boundary will be used to find a whole word. In this case we use word boundary before and after the word we are searching for. Or it can be used in this way to return all words inside the text. In this case we get each word inside the text as whole word. That's all about word boundary pattern. Let's now check the last anchor pattern, non-word boundary. This is the opposite of word boundary. It matches at the position where a word character is followed or preceded by another word character. This can be also used in three different ways. The first one is as follows. We set non-word boundary and then the string we are searching for, for example cat. This means, we are searching for the word cat, which is not at the beginning of a word. For example the word catch contains the word cat at the beginning, therefore we don't get any result here. But the word duplicate contains the word cat inside the word. So, it has other characters before it, therefore we get the word cat as result. The second way is to set non-word boundary after the word, for example this one. This means, that we are searching for the word cat, which is not at the end of the word. For example, wildcat contains the word cat at the end of the word, therefore we don't get any result here. But the word catch contains the word cat, and it's not at the end of the word, therefore we get it as result. The third way is to use non-word boundary before and after the string, for example this one. This means, that we are searching for the word cat, which is not at the beginning or at the end of the word. For example the word duplicate contains the word cat in the middle. It has characters before and after it, therefore we get it as result. That's all about non-word boundary pattern.
Let's summarize the anchor patterns, before moving to the next part. We have the following four anchor patterns. Carrot symbol. It's used to denote the beginning of a line. It will be used before the pattern we are searching for. Dollar sign. It's used to denote the end of a line. It will be used after the pattern we are searching for. Word boundary. It matches the position where a word character is not followed or preceded by another word character. It can be used before, after or before and after the pattern we are searching for. Non-word boundary. It matches at the position where a word character is followed or preceded by another word character. It can be used before, after or before and after the pattern we are searching for. That's all about anchor patterns. Let's now move on to the next patterns, look around patterns. Look around patterns help us check if certain words or characters are present or not in a particular place in the text. What's interesting is that even after this check, the position we are at in the text doesn't change. So, it's like peeking ahead or behind without moving. There are four types of these patterns. Positive look ahead. Negative look ahead. Positive look behind. Negative look behind. Let's start with the look ahead patterns. Positive look ahead helps us find words or characters that come before a specific part of the text. Here's a simple example. If we want to find numbers that come before the word px, we can use this pattern. This pattern to find one or more numbers. This part is like saying, only if followed by px. As a result we get the following numbers. This is how to use positive look ahead. Let's check the negative look ahead. This is the opposite of positive look ahead. It helps us find words or characters that don't come before a specific part of the text. For instance, to find numbers that don't come before px, we'd use a pattern similar to the positive look ahead but with a twist. This pattern to find one or more numbers. This part is like saying, only if not followed by px. As a result I will get only these numbers, because they are not before the word px. This is also how to use negative look ahead. Let's now check the other two patterns, positive and negative look behind. Positive look behind helps us find words or characters that come after a specific part of the text. For instance, to find a numbers that come after the word amount, we'd use the following pattern. This part means only if it's after amount. This pattern to find one or more numbers. The result will be the following numbers. This is how to use positive look behind. Let's check the negative look behind. This is the opposite of positive look behind. It helps us find words or characters that don't come after a specific part of the text. For instance, to find numbers that don't come after amount, we'd use a pattern similar to the positive look behind but with a twist. This part means only if it's not after amount. This pattern to find one or more numbers. As a result I will get only these numbers, because they are not after the word amount. This is also how to use negative look behind. Let's summarize the look around patterns, before moving to the next part. Look around patterns are powerful tools for making assertions about the presence or absence of patterns in relation to others. There are four look around patterns, which are the following. Positive look ahead. It helps us find words or characters that come before a specific part of the text. We use it after the text we want to get as a result. Negative look ahead. It helps us find words or characters that don't come before a specific part of the text. We use it after the text we want to get as a result. Positive look behind. It helps us find words or characters that come after a specific part of the text. We use it before the text we want to get as a result. Negative look behind. It helps us find words or characters that don't come after a specific part of the text. We use it before the text we want to get as a result. That's all about look around patterns. Let's now check the last four patterns in this video, which are the following. White space characters. This pattern finds spaces in the text, like empty spaces, tabs, and even when you hit enter for a new line. Non white space characters. The opposite of the first pattern. It finds everything in the text except for spaces, tabs, and line breaks. Tab character specifically looks for the tab spaces in your text. Special or reserved characters. Some symbols have special meanings in our pattern language, like plus and question mark. When we want to find these symbols directly in the text, and not use their special meanings, we add a backslash before them. 
For example, if we want to find the plus symbol in text, we write it as backslash plus. Without the backslash, plus usually means, find one or more of the previous thing. If we're looking for a question mark in text, we write it as backslash question mark. Without the backslash, question mark means find zero or one of the previous thing. So, whenever you want to find these special symbols directly, just remember to use a backslash before them. The patterns I explained in this video, are the most important patterns you should learn in my opinion. But there are many other patterns, that can be used in regular expressions. Let's now move on to the next part of this video, the regular expression options. Imagine you're playing a game where you need to find specific words in a big book. Now, you have a special magnifying glass called regular expression, that helps you in this search. This magnifying glass has different buttons on it, and each button changes the way you search. Some buttons let you find words even if they're spelled with big or small letters. Others let you see more clearly through multiple pages at once. These buttons on our magnifying glass are called options. They help make our word search game easier and more fun, depending on what we're looking for. Ready to dive in and see what each button does? Let's go! There are 11 options in regular expression, which are the following. Let's explore each of these options. None. This is like using the magnifying glass without pressing any buttons. It's the basic setting, helping you find words exactly as they are written in the book. For instance, searching for apple will return only apple which is written exact the same. Ignore case. Imagine a button that helps you find a word, whether it's written in big letters, small letters, or a mix of both. Pressing this button, you won't miss apple, apple, or even apple when you're searching for apple. Multiline. With this button, your magnifying glass can look at the beginning and end of every line on a page, not just the start or finish of the entire story. It's like having x-ray vision for every single line. Explicit capture. Let's say you're searching for multiple words at once. This button ensures you only capture words that are specifically named or highlighted in your search list. Compiled. Think of this as a super speed button. If you're searching for the same word over and over in different books, this setting makes your magnifying glass work faster each time you search. Single line. By pressing this, you can see clearer through the entire page. Even if a word stretches from the end of one line to the start of the next, this button ensures you won't miss it. Ignore pattern white space. Sometimes, words might be split by spaces or gaps. This button helps you ignore those spaces, so ice cream and ice cream look the same through your magnifying glass. Right to left. A fun twist. This button lets you search from the end of the book back to the beginning. It's like reading a story backward. ECM a script. Imagine that the word search game you're playing has different versions, kind of like how some board games have variations based on countries or cultures. One of the most popular versions of our game is played by a big group of friends who use a set of rules called JavaScript. Now, the ECM a script button on our magnifying glass ensures that when you play with them, your tool follows their specific rulebook. So, even if there are slight differences in how they search for words or patterns, pressing this button makes sure you're all on the same page and playing the game the same way. It's like an adapter for playing the game internationally. Culture invariant. Imagine playing the word search game with friends from all around the world. This button makes sure your magnifying glass works consistently, no matter where the book comes from or the cultural nuances it may have. Non-backtracking. Sometimes, our magnifying glass might double-check words to ensure it's found the right match. This button stops it from looking back, making it move only forward in its search. This was a briefly introduction for the regular expression options. So, options in regex fine-tune how the pattern detective works. Whether you want it to ignore cases, span multiple lines, or be swift with a compiled approach, there's an option for that. If you want to learn more about the options, please check the following page on Microsoft documentation. You will learn more about the options in detail. But I will also show you later in this video, how to use these options in your code. Let's now move on to the next chapter of this video, the regular expressions namespace. I've already discussed what regular expressions are and the patterns they come with. It's now time to learn how to use them in our programming. To do that, I will introduce you to the regular expressions class. 
This class is part of the system.text.regular expressions namespace. To utilize regular expressions in your program, you need to include this namespace. Remember, the regular expression is a class, so it has its own features and methods. Let's explore the methods of this class on Microsoft documentation page. Here is the main page of the namespace. Here are the classes, which are available under this namespace. Let's check regex class. On this page you can find information about this class, what does it mean with some examples. On the left side we have the properties and methods of this class. Let's navigate to the methods. These are all available methods under this class. I will not explain each method. Only the most important methods, what we will use in this video later. But you can learn about each method on this page, what does it mean and how to use. Let's start with the first method, count. It searches an input string for all occurrences of a regular expression and returns the number of matches. It returns an integer number, which represents the number of matches found in the text. Let's check the second method, is match. It indicates whether the regular expression finds a match in the input string. It returns a Boolean result, true or false, either we found a match or not. Let's move to the next method, match. It searches an input string for a substring, that matches a regular expression pattern, and returns the first occurrence as a single match object. The most important word here is single. So, the result of this method will be a single value, which is the first found match in the text. The output of this method is of type match, which is an object that contains information about the match. To learn more about this object, please check this link here. Let's check the next method, matches. This method does exact the same like match method. The only difference between both methods is, that matches method returns all found matches, not only the first found match. So, the output is a match collection, which contains all matches. Let's check the last method, replace. It replaces strings that match a regular expression pattern with a specified replacement string. So, it's not only to find a specific text, but also to replace the found text with a new one. These are the most important methods you should learn in case you want to use regular expressions. Later in the examples, you will learn how to use each method. So, let's switch to UiPath to learn how to use regex. There are two ways to use regular expressions in UiPath. Either using the standard activities, which are the following three activities. Find matching patterns represents the methods, match and matches. Is text matching represents the method is match. Replace matching patterns represents the method replace. The activities are available under the package, uipath.system.activities. The second way is using invoke code activity. In this case you can use more methods and do more with regex. Let's start with the activities. The first activity is find matching patterns. This activity as mentioned represents the methods match and matches. On the right side you can see which properties do you have to set the pattern to find the text you are searching for. Here you can select one or more options if required. If you don't select any one, the default option will be selected, which is none. The next one is the text you want to search in. This activity returns two outputs. The first one is the result, which is a collection that contains all found matches. So, using this property is like using the method matches. The second one is first match, which is a string that contains the first found match. So, using this property is like using the method match. You can use both outputs if required. This is the first activity we have. Let's try to use this activity to find a simple text. I will first add the text I want to search in, for example this one which contains a credit card number. Suppose I want to extract this number from the text. To do that I need to set the pattern as we learnt before. The number structure is as following. In total, we have 16 numbers. Each four numbers are separated with hyphen. To get that we can use this pattern. Here I use the backslash D with curly brackets and the number 4, which means that I am searching for four numbers. The same is repeated four times to return the 16 numbers with a hyphen between them. The pattern is ready and will return the credit card number from the text. Now I want to store the output of this activity in variable. I will create a variable to store the collection of matches. and another variable for the first match.
Now I want to print the results in the output console. I will use for each loop to print out the content of the collection. In this activity I will use the item variable with the property value, to return the current match from the collection. This loop will print out all found matches in case we have more than one. I will add another write line activity to print out the content of the first match variable. Let's execute the code to check the result. The first output is from the collection. As you see, we got only one result because we only have one credit card number. It's exact the same number what we have in the text. The second output is from the first match variable, which is also the same. This is how to use the activity, find matching patterns. Let's check the second activity, is text matching. As mentioned, this activity represents the method as match. Here we have again the same inputs. The pattern, the options and the input text to search in. The result here is a boolean value, which indicates if the value we are searching for is found or not. Let's check the last activity, replace matching patterns. This activity represents the method replace. Here we have again the same inputs. But we have one more input, which is the new text we want to set instead of the found match. The output of this activity will be the same input text, but it contains the new inserted value instead of the found one. These are the three activities we can use in UI path in context of regex. Let's now check how to use invoke code activity in context of regex. First I will add the activity. The selected language is vb.net, but you can also use C-sharp. Let's write the code we want. First I will define the input string I want to search and the pattern to find the text I want. I added the same values here, what I already used in the previous example. Both variables are of type string. Now I have to define a variable of regex class. For that I have to use the namespace, or I can also import this namespace to my workflow, so that I don't need to use it for each class. Here I use the pattern, what I defined before. Now I will create another variable of type match collection, where I will store the output of the method later. This is in case I want to use the method matches. But in case I want to use the method match, I can use the type match. Now I will assign a value for this variable. Here I will use the method I need, in this example matches. For this method I use the input string, where I want to search in. The output of this statement will be a collection of found matches. Now I will add for each loop to print out the found matches. I will use the property value to get the content of the found match. Using this loop, each found match will be printed out to the console. The code is ready and should do the same like the previous example using UI path activities. Let's execute the code to check what happens. As you can see, I got the credit card number as output. It's the same result as what we got using the activity, find matches patterns. This is how to use regex inside invoke code activity. I didn't use regex options in my code. Let's see how to use options in case we need that. For that I will first define a variable of type regex options. Here you can select the option you need. We have all available options. Let's select the option compiled for example. Now I have to use this variable with a regex class. I can do that in this way. I use the variable what I created before. This is also how to use regex options. Let's execute the code again to check the output. As you can see, I got the same result again. In my example I only used one option. But in case you need more than one option, you have to add the other options separated with her operator. For example, to use ignore case and multi-line options, you can use the following statement. This is how to define more than one regex option. One last thing I want to tell about the regex options is the following. Each option has an underlying integer value. Here are the values of each option. If you want to use the numbers instead of the names, you can do that in this way. For example, if you want to use ignore case option, you can use the following statement. It's exact the same like this one. You can also do the same for selecting more than one option. So, you have to separate the options with or operator. 
that's all about using regex in UiPath. Let's now move on to the next chapter of this video, Online Regex Tester. There are several popular online regex tester websites, that many developers find useful for crafting and testing their regular expressions. Here are some of the most frequently used ones. Regx101 Regxr Regx Tester slash Debugger Regx Pal Regx Storm Debugx Let's check one of these websites, so that you can understand how to use an online regex tester in general. I will show you Regxr. This is the main page. In this part we write the pattern, for example this one. The patterns we write will be explained below in this part. For each pattern we have written there is an explanation. In the middle we write the text we want to search in. On the right side under flags we can select some options. We don't have all regex options here, but the most important options are available. On the left side, under regex reference, there is an explanation for each regex pattern. For example, here you can find the quantifier patterns. The anchors patterns. Look around patterns. And so on you can find explanation for each pattern here. Let's test this website using the same example, what we implemented in UiPath. First I will write the text I want to search in. And now I will write the pattern to extract the credit card number. As you can see, the number is highlighted. This means, this will be the output of this pattern. If there is more than one match, all found matches will be highlighted. In this way, you can test your pattern easily before using them in your code. This is how to use this website to test your pattern. All other websites work the same. I recommend you to use this online tester, but you can choose any one you want. I use this tester for creating this video. That's all about online regex tester. Remember to always be cautious when sharing sensitive data on any online platforms. It's a good practice to only test with generic or dummy data when using online regex testers, or any online tools for that matter, to ensure the privacy of your data. If you want to delve deeper into understanding regular expressions, many of these tools also provide tutorials, explanations, and community-driven content that can be quite insightful. One last thing I want to mention in this video, is ChatGPT. Using ChatGPT you can find any pattern you need. You only have to explain your requirement with examples, and you will get the patterns you need. But please make sure, that not everything is always correct. You have to specify your requirement as you can, so that you get the correct answer. Let's check the following example. Here I wrote what I need with an example of the text and the output I want to get. As a result I got the pattern to achieve the task. And I also got some explanation, how to use this pattern in UiPath. A code example is also available. As mentioned, not all patterns will be correct or suit your requirements. You have to check this pattern before using it in your code. To do that, you can use an online tester, what I showed you before. In case the pattern are not what you are searching for, you can ask chat GPT again and add more information about your requirement until you get the answer you need. You can also use chat GPT to explain you a specific pattern. Alright, as we wrap up this video on regular expressions in vb.net, I'd like to leave you with some parting thoughts. Practice makes perfect. The true power of regular expressions shines through with practice. Start by writing simple patterns, and then challenge yourself with more complex text matching problems. Online regex tester are excellent playgrounds for testing and refining your regex skills. Keep it simple. A common pitfall is overcomplicating your regex patterns. Remember, a simpler regex is usually more readable and maintainable. Always question if there's a more straightforward way to achieve the same result. Stay updated. The world of regular expressions is ever-evolving. New tips, tricks, and best practices emerge continually. Join online forums, communities, or follow Regex-centric blogs to stay in the loop. Best Practices Comments Most Regex engines, including the one in .NET, allow you to embed comments directly within your Regex patterns. Use them to explain the more intricate parts of your patterns. Avoiding catastrophic backtracking. Be cautious with patterns that have multiple, nested quantifiers. They can cause performance issues or even crashes. Deepen your knowledge. 
If you're fascinated by regex, consider diving into advanced topics like look-aheads, look-behinds, and atomic groups. Books like Mastering Regular Expressions by Jeffrey Friedel offer a deep dive into the subject. Apply what you've learned. Try incorporating regex into your projects. Whether it's form validation, string manipulation, or data extraction, you'll find numerous practical applications for what you've learned today. Thank you for joining me in this video. Remember, the journey with regular expressions is both challenging and rewarding. Embrace the learning curve, and soon, you'll find Regex a powerful tool in your developer arsenal. Until next time, happy coding!